Once upon a time there was a mother pig and her three piglets. Three brothers are the same height. Round, pink, with the same funny tails. All summer the pigs played in the green grass, basked in the sun, basked in the puddles. But then autumn came. One day my mother said that it was time for them to think about winter. She asked them to build a big house. The younger brother said that winter is still far away. The middle brother said that he would build his own house when needed. And the older brother decided to build the house himself. The younger and middle brothers did nothing but play their games. It got colder and colder every day. The younger brother decided to build a house out of straw. The middle brother thought it would be very cold in the thatched house in winter. He decided to build a house from twigs and twigs. By the evening their housing was ready. They were very proud of themselves and could not get enough of their buildings. Now they were free and could do whatever they wanted. They decided to go to their older brother and see what kind of house he had built for himself. The older brother was busy building. He applied stones, kneaded clay and slowly built himself a reliable, durable home. The younger brothers found their older brother at work. They were very surprised at what kind of fortress he was building. The elder brother calmly continued to work. The younger and middle brothers began to joke and laugh at his house. They were so amused that their screeching echoed far across the lawn. The elder brother asked to be quiet, because the wolf could hear them. The younger and middle brothers were amused even more. They decided that the older brother was just a coward. And the two brave brothers went for a walk. On the way, they sang and danced, and when they entered the forest, they made such a noise that they woke up the wolf who was sleeping under the pine tree. The disgruntled and hungry wolf went to the place where the screeching of two stupid pigs came from. The brothers walked merrily and talked about how easily they would deal with the wolf. And suddenly they saw a real living wolf. He was standing behind a large tree. He had very evil eyes and a huge toothy mouth. The brothers were so frightened that their thin tails trembled finally, finally. The wolf prepared to jump he snapped his teeth and blinked his right eye. The pigs suddenly came to their senses and, screeching across the forest, rushed to run away. Raising clouds of dust, they rushed each to his own house. The younger brother ran to his thatched hut and slammed the door in front of the wolf. The wolf growled and demanded to open the door. The younger brother, out of fear, could not utter a word. Then the wolf began to blow. The light roof instantly flew off the thatched hut. The wolf took a deep breath and blew a second time, and the thatch house flew in all directions. The wolf was delighted, snapped his teeth, and pounced on his younger brother. But the pig deftly dodged and ran. He ran to the house of the middle brother. The brothers managed to lock themselves up and looked at each other in dismay. The wolf got angry and began to blow. The house is slightly askew. The wolf blew a second, then a third, then a fourth time. But the house was still standing. The wolf took a deep breath and blew for the fifth time. The house shook and fell apart. Only one door stood for some time in the middle of the ruins. In horror, the piglets rushed to the house of their elder brother. The wolf ran after them. He was sure that this time the pigs would not run away from him. The piglets quickly rushed past the large apple tree without even hitting it. And the wolf did not have time to turn and hit the apple tree, which covered him with apples. One hard apple hit him between the eyes. A big bump jumped on the wolf's forehead. At this time, the younger and middle brothers managed to run into the house of the older brother and bolt the door. The wolf ran to the door, growled and demanded to open the door. The younger brothers were very scared and could not say anything in return. And the elder brother knew that he and his brothers had nothing to fear in a solid stone house. Then the wolf sucked in more air and blew as soon as he could. But no matter how much it blew, not a single stone moved. 
And then he looked up and noticed a large, wide chimney on the roof. He carefully climbed onto the roof and began to go down the pipe. The pigs heard a rustle. The elder brother immediately guessed what was the matter. He quickly rushed to the cauldron in which water was boiling and tore off the lid. The wolf went down the pipe and fell straight into the cauldron. His eyes widened to his forehead. The scalded wolf flew out with a wild roar and rushed into the forest. And the three little pigs looked after him and were glad that they had so cleverly taught the evil robber a lesson. From that time on, the brothers and their mother began to live together under one roof. There lived a husband and wife. For a long time they already wanted to have a child, but he was not there. One day, my wife fell ill. The husband asked her what she wants the most. The wife replied that there was a magnificent garden nearby, where many of the most beautiful flowers grow. There is a beautiful Rapunzel in the garden. It looks so fresh and so green that she really wanted to taste it. But the garden was surrounded by a high fence, and no one dared to enter it, since this garden belonged to one witch. She possessed great power, and everyone in the world feared her. The husband loved his wife very much, and decided to get a Rapunzel for her, no matter what it cost him. And so at dusk he climbed over the stone fence into the sorceress's garden, in a hurry picked up a whole handful of green Rapunzel and brought it to his wife. She immediately made herself a salad from it and ate greedily. She liked this salad so much that the next day she wanted even more than before. The husband made his way into the garden again, but the witch was already standing in front of him. She glared at him angrily and said that he would pay a lot for stealing the Rapunzel. He asked the witch not to be angry, because he tore off the Rapunzel for his wife, who was very ill. And he loves her so much. The witch's anger passed a little, and she said that if it was true, she would allow him to collect as much Rapunzel as he wanted, but on one condition. He will have to give the witch the child who will be born to his wife. The husband agreed with fear. When the wife gave birth to a daughter, the witch immediately appeared, took the child with her, and named her Rapunzel. Rapunzel became the most beautiful girl in the world. When she was 12 years old, the witch locked her in a tower. That tower was in the forest, and it had no doors or stairs. Only at the very top was a small window. When the witch wanted to climb the tower, she called Rapunzel to pull her sides down. And Rapunzel had long, beautiful hair. She hears the voice of the witch, loosens her braids, ties them up to the window hook, and the hair falls down, and the witch then climbs up clinging to them. Several years passed, and the king's son happened to ride a horse through the forest where the tower stood. Suddenly he heard singing, and it was so pleasant that he stopped and began to listen. Rapunzel sang it in her wonderful voice. The prince wanted to climb up. He began to look for the entrance to the tower, but it was impossible to find him. He once saw how the witch climbs up the braids that Rapunzel lowered her. And the next day, when it was already getting dark, the prince drove up to the tower and called Rapunzel. She heard, pulled her braids down, and the prince climbed up. Rapunzel, seeing that a man she had never seen came to her, was very frightened at first. But the prince spoke to her affectionately, and said that his heart was so touched by the singing that he decided to see her without fail. Then Rapunzel ceased to be afraid, and when he asked if she agreed to marry him, she gave her consent and held out her hand to him. 
but they just did not know how to go down together. They figured out that when the prince came, he would always take a piece of silk with him, and Rapunzel would weave a ladder out of it. And when the ladder is ready, they will go down it together and leave. The sorceress did not notice anything until one day Rapunzel asked why it is easier to drag the prince up. The sorceress understood everything, got angry and clutched in rage at Rapunzel's beautiful hair. I wrapped them around my left arm several times and with my right grabbed the scissors and cut them off. She took the sorceress into the dense thicket of Rapunzel and hid her there. She tied the severed braids to the window hook, and when the prince appeared, she pulled them down. The prince climbed up and saw the witch. She looked at him with her malicious look and said that he would never see Rapunzel. The king's son was beside himself with grief and jumped out of the tower in despair, but the thorny thorns of the bushes, on which he fell, gouged out his eyes. The blind prince wandered for several years in grief and sorrow through the forest, all the time grieving and crying for his beloved lost. Once he went into a dense thicket. Suddenly the prince heard someone singing, it seemed so familiar to him, and he went to meet him. When he came closer, Rapunzel recognized him, threw herself on his neck and cried bitterly with joy. Two tears fell in his eyes, and the prince regained his sight and began to see as before. He brought her to his kingdom, and they lived for many, many years in happiness and joy.